Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Jack is informed about Victor's plan by Tucker. According to YNR spoilers, Tucker McCall, played by Trevor St. John, might have vanished off the face of the planet right now. But Tucker always has his ears to the ground, monitoring the activities of his adversaries. Tucker said that Audra Charles, Zuleika Silver, was supported by Jack Abbott, Peter Bergman, when she stole Glissade from him. Will Tucker set Jack straight by informing him of Victor Newman's, Eric Braden, intentions to seize control? The restless and the young, according to spoilers, Billy is merely collateral damage and Jack is Victor's primary objective. Victor says he wants Melody Thomas Scott's character Nikki Newman to be the CEO of Chancellor Enterprises. But Victor also wants to ruin Jack. Will Tucker discover this and let his ex-brother-in-law know? Although Tucker doesn't think much of Jack, she understands that Ashley Abbott, Eileen Davidson, wouldn't want anything to happen to her father's business. Ashley would undoubtedly object to Victor using Jabot for any purpose. But Victor might have the intention of shutting down Jabot entirely. Jack could be forewarned by Tucker that his dirty deed is being done by Kyle Abbott, Michael Mueller. Tucker would undoubtedly be keeping an eye on Audra, especially while she is in Paris. The fact that Audra and Kyle are cooperating should be a major red flag that Victor is involved. After all, Kyle has turned to Victor before, and this isn't the first time it will happen. Will Kyle be successful in eliminating Jabot? Devin has informed Lily about what is happening, may he be forthcoming with Tucker as well? Adam also knows what Victor is planning. But Adam's got a lot going on with other things too. Tucker might greatly improve his standing in Jack's eyes if he assisted him. Will Tucker try to accomplish that? In this case, Jack's dislike of Tucker can become a major problem. Tucker would undoubtedly attempt to alert Jack to the need to hold Victor and Audra accountable for their actions. It's important for Jack to understand that his son is also working against him. In order to attempt to stop Kyle, Jack needs to be aware that he isn't making arbitrary threats. Will Tucker receive the information in time to assist Jack in fending off Jabot's attack? Will Victor succeed in achieving his goals and ruin Jack for being the guy Nikki went to instead of him? Victoria went to the athletic club and met Nate in a room. Victoria had finalized a business deal in Los Angeles, and Nate was taken aback to meet her so soon after. As soon as they kissed hello, the couple undressed. Victoria asked Nate how things were going with Nikki while Victor was away in Europe, following their passionate kiss. Nate retorted that he had told Nikki, at lunch, that his dream was to co-manage Newman Enterprises with Victoria. Nate went on to say that he had told Nikki how he really felt about Victoria, characterizing their bond as a close friendship that had not yet developed into a committed partnership. After so many setbacks, Victoria sobbed that she was unsure of her ability to have a meaningful, committed relationship with anyone. Nate answered that he could never ask for more than to collaborate with Victoria and plot worldwide dominance. Victoria concurred and added that she shouldn't press the issue with Nate. Sharon explained at Society what Phyllis and Adam had agreed upon. Let me check if I have this straight, Phyllis stated. You want guarantees that I'm sorry for blowing up my life if I stay out of jail and accept Adam's offer to become chief technology officer at your company? After taking over control of Cameron Kirsten's business, Sharon clarified that her objective was to see positive change, pointing out that Cameron had been a cruel man. Sharon gave Phyllis confidence that it would be a good chance for development and adjustment. Adam was at the bar when Phyllis told Sharon that she hoped she wouldn't go to jail. Adam went up to Sharon and Phyllis. Phyllis said to Adam that Sharon was worried that her recent acts would result in some sort of karmic revenge, which could potentially interfere with their intentions to integrate their two businesses. Sharon insisted that all she had done was encourage Phyllis to reflect a little. Adam assured Sharon that he would back her wholeheartedly and asked that she avoid thinking only on the worst-case scenario. Adam went on to say that Phyllis would keep to herself and that she was in a much better place than she had been previously. Is there anything Adam knows that Sharon doesn't? Asked Sharon. In response, Adam said he was going with his instincts and thought Phyllis would do great things. 
Adam was informed by Sharon that she was a realist and cautioned that he might have high expectations for Phyllis. Phyllis remembered that Adam had told her that Nick and Sharon weren't happy that Adam had given her the position. Sharon clarified that choosing to hire Phyllis ought to have been a group decision. Given their shared past, Phyllis acknowledged that working together could be uncomfortable, but she was certain they could work it out. Phyllis said she used to work at Restless Style with Nick and Sharon. Adam winced, remembering that the gossip sheet had made him a regular target. Upon Sharon's arrival back to Crimson Lights, Mariah and Tessa welcomed her and declared that they had discovered the ideal babysitter. Satisfied that worries regarding Aria's care had been resolved, Mariah declared she would be leaving Jabot to take a job with Sharon's new business. Sharon said Mariah could get started right away. Sharon pointed out that each employee at her company had enlisted for a different reason, so she would be closely monitoring the situation. Mariah brought up Sharon and Chance's developing romance. Grinning, Sharon acknowledged that she was having fun spending time with Chance. Daniel told Summer at Chancellor Park that if Phyllis entered a guilty plea to every accusation, Christine might decide not to prosecute her. Summer said, she's not going to do it, is she, in shock. Daniel answered, hoping Phyllis would agree to Christine's proposal. Despite the fact that their mother had been duped by Stark, Summer sobbed that doing so would result in her serving a permanent prison sentence. Daniel claimed he had a sneaking suspicion that Phyllis was prepared to spare Summer punishment in order to keep herself safe. Telling Daniel to back off, Summer stormed out, citing her close relationship with her mother as the reason she had sided with Phyllis. Tucker stormed into Audra's room at the athletic club and gave her a hard time. Tucker said, I tell you, it is hard to believe that someone as smart and capable as you could make such a monumentally stupid mistake. Tucker told Audra that, while being well aware of the potential consequences should the truth ever come to light, she had left evidence that connected him to legal troubles involving a singer. Tucker questioned Audra about whether or not she had attempted to screw me over. In response, Audra said she didn't know what Tucker was talking about. Tucker brought up a specific musician that was signed to McCall's label to Audra. Tucker said that during the singer's tour, he had preyed on minor girls. The singer was arrested on allegations of statutory rape. Audra held the public relations firm accountable for concealing the scandal. Tucker reminded Audra that he had given her the order to clean up the mess after dismissing the public relations staff. Audra remembered that she had erased every file and correspondence pertaining to the singer. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.